We live in an aggressive world. We are routinely confronted with new incidents of horrific violence, including murder, war, and genocide. But aggression is a natural instinct in all of us. It helps us adapt to our surroundings and can protect us from threats to our safety. Problems arise, however, when aggression is taken too far and becomes violence. Neuroscientists are working to identify the brain regions, neurotransmitters, and genes that produce aggressive impulses. Psychologists seek to understand the influence of environmental factors that can prompt aggression's escalation. A remarkable group of scientists dedicated to unraveling the mysteries of aggression are here. They are David Anderson of the California Institute of Technology, Richard Trimley of the University of Montreal, Johanna Ray Volkart of Clark University, and Emil Kokaro of the University of Chicago. Joining us also is Adrian Rain of the University of Pennsylvania, and once again, my co-host, Dr. Eric Kandel. This is our third series, simply to put this in perspective. In the first series, we dealt with the normal brain. We considered perception, action, learning, and memory. In the second series, you and I discussed brain abnormalities, and we considered schizophrenia and depression, Parkinson's disease, and Alzheimer's disease. Now we're turning to the third series, Brain Science and Society. Today, in the first program, we're going to consider brain science and aggression and the social amplification of violence. Now, when you and I talked about this series and this particular topic, aggression, we knew this is an important topic in front of us, and we knew it's been with us since the beginning of humankind. Cain killing Abel, the beginning of Genesis, you can't get earlier than that. And yet, at least it was not obvious to me six months ago that today this would be an even more important topic. Uh, that wherever you go, when you pick up a newspaper, when you listen to your programs, you see one episode or another of extraordinary aggression. Shootings in the school, sexual assault in the military, and in religious orders. Uh, genocide and terrorism in the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. Outbursts of anti-Semitism all over Europe. Denmark, 7,000 Jews protected almost every individual during the Second World War, now has anti-Semitic outbreaks, shooting of a guard in front of a synagogue. The list goes on. So this program could not be better timed mm -hmm. because, as you pointed out, we're going to discuss what we know about the biology of aggression, so we might actually be helpful to society in this way. Uh, we're going to consider a number of issues uh, that relate to aggression in an important way. Uh, we're begin going to begin by considering the biology of aggression and how biology of aggression often focuses on sexuality. Uh, we're going to consider the development of aggression, how kids you know, first start to be aggressive. We're going to learn about how victims respond to aggression, which is not necessarily a uniform response. And fascinatingly, how aggression gets amplified. How people who were bystanders get recruited and often get enthusiastically involved in aggression. We're going to speak about aggression in people and their various kinds. There's you know, impulsive aggression and there's meditative aggression, and they're quite different. We're going to hear about them. Now, in all of these discussions, we're going to come back and forth to certain brain regions, and four regions are particularly important. The prefrontal cortex, the ventral striatum, the amygdala, and the hypothalamus. The prefrontal cortex is involved in executive function and decision-making and very much what we call character formation. And defects in prefrontal cortex often can lead to an increase in aggression. The ventral striatum uh, is involved uh, in reinforcement. It's a recruited for addiction and also for certain kinds of aggression. Uh, the amygdala is the orchestrator of emotion, both positive and negative, and it influences several brain systems, in particular the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus has many functions, but we're going to focus in particular its role in uh, aggression and in sexuality. Fantastic. Let's begin with David Anderson in understanding the biology of aggression. So, Charlie, we're basic neuroscientists in my lab, and we want to understand some of the most fundamental questions about aggression. How is aggression, which is an evolutionarily ancient behavior, you see it throughout the animal kingdom, how is that hardwired 
into the brain. Where is aggression in the brain? And we've studied this problem in flies and in mice, and we're particularly interested in the relationship between the parts of the brain that control aggression and those that control mating or sexual behavior. Because as you know, mating and aggression are closely related behaviors. And in nature, you often find that periods of aggression are at their highest when animals are mating. And these behaviors reinforce each other. But at the same time, they're mutually exclusive. So a male will direct mating towards a female of the species, aggression towards another male. So there's kind of a paradox. How can these behaviors be mutually exclusive but also reinforce each other in some way?